Our storage arrays, as you saw in some of the demos, are highly virtualized, and that's a very nice fit for the virtual server environments like VMware, Microsoft's Hyper-V, uh, Citrix, ZenSource, etc. And the, the virtualization and storage array has a very natural fit for ease of use with the server virtualization that those products provide. And of course, Dell server virtualization is a very important part of the server business for Dell, as you're familiar. So, traditional storage arrays are very much um, the administrator when they're managing the system, even if they're in a GUI or a, a nice tool, they're actually binding data to specific pieces of hardware. So like in a lot of storage arrays, the administrator gets a GUI that shows them a bunch of disks and they pick disk, disk, make a RAID set, put exchange on it. Disk, disk, put a RAID set, put SQL on it. And the, this binding of data to physical disks um, becomes a lot of problems for administrators. And, and the reason for that is what happens when the data wants to grow, but the disks don't have any room anymore? Now you have to find other disks and you have to rebind the data to another disk. So you cannot just add a disk? Well, sometimes you may be able to physically add a disk, but you can't get the data to spread across the new disk. You see what I'm saying? So most storage arrays will electrically let you put a disk in them if they have a slot free, but that won't do anything about moving the data around, right? So there's kind of two steps. Um, so, and, and then the other problem you run into with that is what happens when your, your, your data only needs a half a disk of, of capacity, but you have to give it a whole disk because that's how you have to bind it. You know what I'm saying? There's always, it doesn't fit right scenario. Now in virtual storage arrays, a lot like virtual servers, so if you think about physical servers before server virtualization, we had the same problem. We put an application on a server. What if it didn't need the whole server? Well, you had a poorly utilized server. What if it needed more than that? Well, sometimes you had an application that was performing badly, right? Well, when we went to server virtualization, we had the ability to make applications movable, portable, right? We could run them all on this server if the server was physically underutilized, and if that didn't work, we could move them off to give the application more performance. So if you think about it, we had the ability to move things around dynamically. Storage virtualization is the exact same thing, allowing the data from an application to be dynamically placed on hardware or replaced on hardware to optimize utilization rates. And so that's why it's so important, just like you're optimizing server hardware utilization, how do you optimize storage hardware utilization? Virtualization and automation are the answer. And so, um, you know, let me use some things by analogy. So VMware has their core um, hypervisor, and, and hypervisors are becoming relatively commonized across a lot of vendors. But then VMware has features like vMotion, which is the ability to move uh, virtual machines between machines. They have capabilities around power management for moving those virtual machines. Well, our storage array, it's a virtualized storage array, and we built into our system have automatic load balancing, which is analogous to what v vMotion does on the server. We do that in the storage. And that's why the products fit so well, that for customers that are used to advanced virtualization products, VMware is one example of that, and they go through and say, I like VMware because it does A, B, and C. When we talk about our product, we show we do the exact analogous things. But they're analogies. They're a mate for VMware. So we're not competing with VMware. We're, we're making the storage arrays behave dynamically, just like VMware's make the servers behave dynamically. One level of storage virtualization is you virtualize the disks in the RAID sets and you create virtual disks, we call those volumes in our environment. There are other storage arrays that create virtual disks out of RAID sets. Some vendors do it in their storage arrays themselves, some vendors might even do it, for example, in switches, like fiber channel switches, with their virtualization. Now another part of virtualization, however, is virtualizing the network. In other words, how when you add more hardware resources that you can actually add more network resources at the same time and, and not only load balance the disk drives but load balance the networks and the controllers. It's when you go to this network level of virtualization that iSCSI has a lot of advantages over fiber channel. And the reason for that is, is that TCP IP networking and the iSCSI protocol allow for your to switch data access from one set of network paths to another without reconfiguring 
the server environment without an administrator having to do it, which means it, it lends itself to automation. In fiber channel, the network connectivity doesn't lend itself very well to automated changing of the connectivity because in fiber channel you you have a almost a binding of the HBA to the switch port to the storage part and the administrator literally is managing that binding if you looked at the tools they use and because of that binding as, as you know binding is the antithesis or the opposite of virtualization virtualization is, is about don't bind let it be dynamic and when you do bind things and, and therefore they're not dynamic it makes it hard to load balance or to virtualize them right and so 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 disk and raid set virtualization yes could be done in a lot of different storage arrays however the network based virtualization is much more difficult if you're not using iSCSI the first vendors i ever saw doing some level of storage virtualization was you know hp started some of that in their eva line many years ago but it was only fiber channel based right and then more recently you know vendors like equalogic have been doing it much more actively so a lot of storage arrays I'm familiar with in the past, they, they very much were bound devices. They, they may have had a GUI on them, but they, the administrator was still binding the objects to physical pieces of, of hardware. We competed with the other um, um, you know, storage vendors, so it, it, you know, it could have been a ne network appliance, HP, uh, EMC sometimes, uh, it, IBM. Dell themselves, of course, sometimes was a competitor for us, right? So, um, given that we were a storage-only company, we mo we commonly competed with other storage-only companies. You know, as we we were all all the storage-only vendors were looking for customers willing to buy their storage separate from their servers. And so, you know, so when a customer was willing to buy storage and not buy it with the same brand name as their server, all of the storage only companies of course would compete for that business right and that's why we use channel partners so aggressively in Equalogic uh, you know probably in the high 90 percent of all our business went just through the channel uh, uh, from our point of view and the reason for that of course is that um, channel partners have a unique relationship with a lot of customers right they've been working with them for years selling them various IT services and so they have a trust relationship there and so rather than us trying to come in and trying to create that trust relationship ourselves to your point could be very difficult we tried to leverage the trust relationship that our channel partners already had with those customers and that turned out to be very mutually beneficial both to Equalogic to our channel partners and to our customers because we were able to bring them new technology the channel partners were able to help introduce it to customers and then, and then the customers were able to reap all the benefits of the automation we've been showing.